And then, right here in your own Buena Vista parking, library parking lot, we had a Jay Leno sighting. He pulled in in that gorgeous 66 Ford Galaxy out there to talk to these guys in this uh, offbeat Porsche, I think it was down there. And they pulled in. They must have seen each other on the road and decided they wanted to chat about each other's cars, and they pulled in when I was here picking up my wife from work. And I just had to shoot that picture. More. Now, we all know about Marlin trucks. Uh, we'll give them some time, too. This is uh, a big industrial concern, a truck factory established at the corner of San Fernando Road in Alameda. That was a big deal in Burbank. We'll see from the photo later on. Uh, a few more things about Roland, uh, Marlin trucks. They were active from 1917 to 1940. They had one called the Roadrunner. I like that fast freight one. That's kind of cool, too. I own a fast freight. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds manly. Yeah, so very manly. Anyway, now we're going to get into space vehicles. And I'm going to tax your memory here. How many of you remember this? little space <laughs> now what was so cool was mike came out to visit me in northern virginia so i took him and his family out to the smithsonian if you go to the smithsonian air and space museum and you go to the basement where they have a gift shop you will see that very uss enterprise it's really cool it's behind big display case what does this have to do with Burbank? well the caption that they have at the smithsonian is the rollout of the enterprise the enterprise model is shown here in december 1964 along with the mental production model shop in Burbank, California, who built it. It took them more than six weeks to acquire about $600 worth of materials to build that starship, <laughs> and uh, photo courtesy of Paramount Pictures. So, the USS Enterprise made in Burbank. <laughs> and you thought the, the, the Blackbird was fast. Here's a well, couple of close-ups. Right. Yeah, it's really neat. If you get to DC, check out the Smithsonian basement. The little lights light up, too. It's really yeah. cool. <laughs> How many of you are familiar with Burbank's Space Capsule of Love? Does anybody know where this was? Weber. Verdugo and Weber, okay. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You both correct answers. This was one of the uh, test vehicles that they used to um, check the thrust of the uh, Gemini system, uh, Space Capsule. Uh, they, they made the ejection seats for the Gemini. Right, yes. That worked well. Outstanding, that's good. Yeah, Weber? Yeah. Anyway, you see here a couple of kids atop it, which was a familiar scene for many. And then you go down here and the guys are shaking hands because they've made the deal to put this thing in the children's play yard. Um, OSHA would not like this today. Yeah. <laughs> but the kids loved it. Like the kids were just with thrilled with it. And they liked it even more when they were teenagers because a lady in the Parks and Rec Department said to me, we have no idea how many kids were conceived in it, so we got rid of it. <laughs> so I got rid of it. <laughs> And here we go. All right, we're going to talk about one of Burbank's most famous characters that you've probably never heard of. This man was the first real estate agent in Burbank, California. His house and property were where Borman Steel is and ran down to Victory Boulevard. You may be familiar with some of his later exploits, but he was the first guy here who sold real estate for the Providencia Land and Water Company. And well, we have a question. <coughs> Okay, do we, before we go into the Fox family, do we have any Fox family members in this audience? Good. <laughs> We're safe now. We're safe. All right. This we is can... another one that kept me up at night. Okay. Yeah, this is, you could do, uh, there you go. All right. This is J.W. Fox. One of his most notable things was, we just celebrated what yesterday? The 100th anniversary of Burbank. J.W. was rolling over in his grave. He was. His main function was he wanted to de-incorporate Burbank. He was so adamant against this that they actually Who's hung doing? him in effigy. <laughs> okay, and burned boom. him on San Fernando Road. Oh, yeah, we'll get, we'll get in there. <laughs> I'm kidding. But anyway, he was quite a character. And um, he, as you can plainly see down here, he thought everything bad that was going to happen to all. Burbank. Um, now, note the use of the flag. That will be relevant later on. Now, everybody's probably familiar with Fox's Folly. Everybody got it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, everyone's heard of that, right? The aerial swallow, as he called it. Look at that fan. <laughs> well, now, there was some discussion about whether or not the thing actually moved. We've got the fan blurring up. It's, it's hauling. It looks like it may be moved. There's a man who looks like he's running. So we think this is an action shot. We think this thing must have actually moved. 
And according, it ran pretty much from his house where Bob Borman's steel is down to the end of his property at Burbank, or Victory Boulevard along all of it. Here's an aerial shot of the same area. This would be taken from right about where Burbank Water and Power is today. And uh, we've often wondered, looking at this shot, how they got up. Yeah, or trying to figure out on a silo or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can see the houses along Victory Boulevard in the back there. Here's a nice close-up of uh, the day that they um, rolled out the aerial swallow. You notice everybody's dressed in their finest Sunday dress. And you see, this was just about 100 years ago, July 4, 1911. Well, we think it's 1911. We'll show the supporting evidence. There we go. Oh, yeah. Patriotic Day 4. Look at that gal. Look at that trim gal with the, with the waist and the big hat. I think that's really cool. You've got the flag up there. And then you've got what looks like a jazz trio. Now, you can see the head of the base, the upright base. It looks like they're playing, I have no idea what, near the aerial swallow. Big doings in Burbank. Yeah, this was an important thing, apparently. And here they are, um, harvesting fruit next to the aerial swallow out of uh, J.W. Fox's orchard. Olives, maybe? I don't know what those yeah. are. We're guessing olives. And we were wondering if those were his children, too. <laughs> uh, now, this was an interesting find that Wes found uh, right. through his patent and trade. Yeah, it was an easy uh, thing for me to look up the patent numbers because the one of the previous photos said he held a patent, so I looked up the patent database, and sure enough, he had a couple of patents. Now, the interesting thing about, I don't know if you want to call this uh, uh, Revision 9.0 of the Aerial Swallow, it has a fan here, it has a fan there, it has a fan there, it probably had one, of the, it looks like it's got a fan on the bottom, uh, it looks like it may have a fan on the top of the seat. <laughs> this thing must have put out some air and noise and oil. Quite an invention. Oh, we also, um, let's see, he's a co- J.W. and E.C. Fox. E.C. is his wife. We're going to be introducing you to the Fox family shortly, and none of them have first names. They all went by initials. Here's his other patent. Same kind of thing. It's a basically a refinement. The patent's for 1913, as you can see, uh, held by J.W. and his wife. Same sort of thing. Uh, different. There's a rat in the And here, so you're familiar with this, is, this is all J.W. Fox's property. His house was situated at the top because the original train station was just up there in the right. And that's Borman Steel right up there, that great big building. He was up there, uh, he had, uh, that's so the people could get off the train, come over, get in his wagon, and then tour all of the uh, real estate that he was selling. Here now, the, the, uh, I think this is funny because, okay, we laugh at J.W. Fox now, ha ha, Ariel Swallow. But the boys at the Los Angeles Times were beginning to take him seriously. Look at this article. Uh, this is from 1912. We've got multiple Fox Follies hanging from wires, you know, so you could travel from Burbank to San, Santa Monica. There they are, a picture from your utopian future. And the modified Folly, there it is. This thing actually works operating line at Burbank. So there's your future. Anyway, the trolley was removed in the early 1920s. Uh, it was a colossal fit. Fox was very upset because nobody would take him uh, seriously about it. Anyway, uh, probably Fox sold the land uh, as an industrial tract in 1923. Now, this, this is my uh, little tour. I'm kind of proud of this one. And so far, the one can be proud of a subject like this. Uh, when I looked up the uh, uh, Los Angeles Times database, I did a search on Burbank and Fox, and I was astonished to see hit after hit after hit coming up. So, the saw the random pages of Los Angeles Times from 1895 to 1899. Today we call this a media feeding frenzy. It dealt with the father, J.W. Fox Sr., and his son, J.W. Fox Jr. So Junior is the Fox Folly though. His son is also, his father is also J.W. Various other family members, including H.B. Fox, who is J.W. Junior's brother, you following me here? And he was a Burbank constable, which is the same as a policeman. All took place in Burbank. And just to tell you, dysfunctional families are not an artifact of our days. They have them back then. This is the first Fox family mentioned in the press. From Christmas Day, 1888. It describes Constable Fox, this is H.B., apprehends a robber, or a wealthy hobo, it was, we weren't really sure which, who was riding a brake beam. Now here's one of my little tangential discussions. This fellow was riding the rods. Riding the rods, you've heard of riding the rails, these freight hoppers, hobos get on the rails. There's riding the roofs, which is the hobo gets up on the roof. But according to Jack London, the 
the ultimate in hobo entrapment was riding the rods. The rods were the brake structure underneath the car. And the way they would do that, they would get underneath and they'd brace themselves and they would ride in this train traveling 50, 60 miles an hour, clinging precariously to these rods. What happens if you fall asleep? Has anybody ever seen a film entitled Emperor of the North with uh, Ernest Borgman? It's, it's a film about tramps. It's, it's well worth watching. Uh, and, and it's about Jack London. So this fellow was doing a very dangerous thing. It's a puzzling case. Nobody's entirely sure what happened. This guy was a robber or what. Next slide. So here we are. Before March 1899, happier days between father and son. J.W. Fox, father and son, are listed as co-inventors of a card exhibiting device. I haven't been able to find this patent. So an important thing to know about the Fox family was that they were inventors. This was a family of inventors. J.W. Fox Sr.'s father invented a lot of farm equipment on the East Coast and uh, patented a lot of him. Next slide. Uh, December 1891, <coughs> over 100 residents signed a petition to have Constable Fox removed from office. <laughs> Not entirely sure why. It had something to do with receipts, rats possibly. We don't know, but the Fox family is starting to make the news. At this time, 100 people was pretty much half the town. <laughs> All right, so now we move to 1895, and uh, some rather queer 